guys. So the, the, today we are going to be talking about refactoring Internet Core 2. Uh, it's not about teaching you how to do it, it's more about sharing an experience that I've been having through the past year, uh, doing this process uh, of uh, refactoring a big project into web, which was built in web, in web form into the Net Core 2 thing. I'm uh, Frank Mency, and then I work for Arte Scriba, which is my own business. I'm the boss of this company. Oh, yeah. um, the boss. I am the boss of this one, at least. <laughs> so a very important thing is to say thank you to all our sponsors, because without them, this event would be something different. And um, there we are. I'm going to give you a bit of scoping of uh, who I am and then why I fell into this project. So at the moment, I'm based in Lyon and I'm specializing in uh, the Netcore to I mean, transform this kind of uh, subject, transforming from a old web form into the Netcore to. So I provide uh, advising, I mean consulting into, let's say, teaching to the team, for example, how to get into the new technology and then uh, transforming, their, 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 transforming their ideas into, because what happened is Webform is a very different mind frame than it is for the MVC context. Most of my projects in the last five years, they were, let's say, 75% MVC5. A lot of uh, DNN module writing with DFPCI, which I think a lot of you know. And then uh, this year, actually, that's why in the five year, I mean, in the three year, so it count as a 5%. This year has been a lot of a net core too. So, in fact, when we get into this situation, everyone will come to you and say, forget the past, embrace the future. This is uh, more or less uh, the key essence thing about moving into the new technology. That's what Microsoft has said when we say we, break, we do the breaking change. That's more or less uh, where we are. Uh, I mean, the, the, you know, the feeling of it, the main feeling of it. But the fact is, in reality, we can forget the, forget the past. It's not happening. Why? Because we've got, I mean, just speaking about the project I was in, we have uh, tens, even thousands of years of analysis behind this project. I mean, that was like 10 years, 10 people uh, building you know, brick by brick, and then there I come, I fall into this, and they say to me, oh, our customers are unhappy, we want to move on to the next thing, what do you suggest? Okay, let's do some bit, try this, try that, and then um, we have to keep this legacy system, this is the core of the business, this is where the money flows in, this is what makes this business live. So we can't just say, we cut it off, and then, uh, okay, now we do a new thing, because otherwise the business is stopping for like three, four, five years, by the time it gets back on track, competitors, they've taken the market. And uh, when I was uh, living, I mean, I studied in England, when I was living there, one of the main things I've learned, I mean, that's like deep into the British engineering, which I deeply respect. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. That's more or less the, the way I've been trained, the way I've been learning how to handle any kind of project, engineering or IT. And uh, in this project we, we were working on, that was more or less the thing I was keeping repeating all the time as we were facing a situation where, okay, we've got this monster here, what do we do with it? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. The model actually on the project I was on, and uh, it's very similar to many other models I've been uh, seeing, seeing I'm not saying that's like uh, the, the template model, it's one model. We had the database with some good guys writing very good SQL for years, so a lot was going through stored procedures, functionalities, and um, the, the database is, uh, let's say, very well designed, but it's got also its old tricks and things where you get the headache, and then um, it's all managed uh, with uh, SQL uh, ma Management Studio on, uh, I mean, they've got different versions of SQL Server, which is, uh, I think they've got 12, 16. So, I mean, let's say, for example, this client is on SQL Server 16, when this client is on SQL Server 12. And then we have uh, all this bar of uh, exchange with the database, mainly SQL writing in there. And then we get to the layer, 
where all the applications, some of them, like for example, DNN that we know, they use DAL, DAL2, Petapoco, all these things. And then uh, we have Entity Framework for other projects. I mean, both can live side by side, as you can see, I mean, as the model here shows. And then uh, this line say, okay, uh, we don't really want to know the details of what communicate together at the moment. The REST API is more or less what I introduced when I was starting to speak about going into Netcore 2. The REST API was uh, starting to be in this, uh, I mean, in this company, they were starting to do things like this. They use a lot of uh, WCF rather than uh, the REST API. Then there is the application, that's where our DNN would sit. And then on, uh, on this company, they have a feature with a lot of robots, uh, you know, like uh, things, data triggering things, and then the robot sending information to a client, or the opposite, robot going to database externally and then collecting data. So going to the rest of the world and exchanging like this. And then from the application, the clients, the one the paying the license, really, they were there, where, I mean, uh, they were, I mean, in this blue box here, what we see as the web client is more or less what we see as uh, the HTML output and the JavaScript, you know, to stay in the idea of a coding thing. What uh, was essential, what I got to agree with uh, the rest of the crew, because we've been you know, doing loads of testing, loads of consideration, how are we going to handle that? What we got to agree, there was, for example, the robots, they were having direct access to the SQL engine, or they were having direct access to Entity Framework. And then same again, the application, nearly everything was uh, DAL or Entity Framework, and then REST API was nearly non-existent. I mean, it was there, but nearly non-existent. We've improved the web API, First of all, by moving a lot of uh, what was from the application to the REST API. Like, uh, I've got a good demonstration. You see this, for example. These are plugs in the wall. And this plug is pretty much standardized. I want to connect my laptop on this machine here. I use that plug. I want the electricity. I use that plug. And then the web API, it should be seen like this. Is, uh, you got this bar with loads of plugs. And then each time you design a new web API thing, you design a new plug. When uh, we had the, agreed on all that, we decided to say, OK, the robot now, we don't want them to talk directly to the system. So we don't want them to talk directly to Entity Framework. We don't want them to talk directly to the SQL engine. This one especially. This one is the first one we started to stop. And then. Uh, basically by moving everything to the web API, making the robot talk to the web API, standardizing the communication. Everyone speaks the same language from there on. When uh, it's a large project, I mean, that project was uh, more or less about six million a year for the company. So we can't fail. I mean, if we're not allowed to fail. What we what we took as an approach, you know, in the design, in the redesign thing, basically, we took the big project, we check it into pieces, and then pieces coming from one layer or another, and then we started to put the design team, you know, the developers, put this piece in the sprint. Okay, guys, now you're going to be redoing this little uh, part, and then uh, moving sprint after sprint like this. So the first stage we did was to get the smaller component of the application. Why? Because any cake, you're not going to be eating the cake he wants. You're going to chew it bite by bite. So you take a slice and then you take a bite. So that's more or less what we try to do here. We slice the cake into different area. I mean, that was talking about recruitment. So for example, you had the CVs, you had the positions, you had the companies, the clients, the recruitment agencies, things like this. And each one is like an object with its own behavior, but also with its own relation, interrelations with the other objects. And then each object, once we could draw these boundaries, that's more or less what becomes the slice of the cake. 
And then in this slice of the cake, for example, when you talk about, let's say, a position, a position is going to have a name, it's going to have a location, it's going to have like a manager, it's going to have people doing this and that. And then we will be slicing, okay, now we're going to handle who's the manager for that? Where is the location? Where is it located? Which branch? Which company? So doing this kind of a smaller chunk approach and then we filter down through the other layer of the company because if we change one object, we will have to change as well the other layer because you want to get it from one end to the other and then back. So the um, communication from these objects, from the outside world I'm talking, so like uh, on the website you speak about a form where you have a description of a vacancy and then you go through the services where all the little things are going to be filtered to the precise API. So this time the API is, for example, only handling the manager for a position, only handling a manager for an um, agency. And then we pick what uh, we have to do for the refactoring, going down through the, I mean, filtering through the layers. What, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, how we de decompose the team that did the design, I mean, that did the redesign, we first played about the client UI because this is what the client will be seeing and this is what uh, will have the most impact for the smallest uh, amount of work. I mean, looking at DNN, for example, and looking at this project, we had the same questioning where the commercials, they were coming back to us saying, yeah, well, we can't sell anymore because the competitors, they are offering a mobile, which is just so sexy. And then ours is not sexy at all. It's not even working on mobile. Okay, let's do this. What they want? They want this form and this form. It's vital. It's got to happen. We do this. We put a guy, two weeks. He does the mobile version. And while doing this, he review all the CSS. The next team take it on and then say, okay, we're going to provide, you, you need the data like this, we're going to provide you the data like this. So just, just in two weeks, we've provided a new side, a new facet of the big project when uh, now you get the customer having like, a, I mean, the, the salesman, sorry, having like a cutting edge in argument to go back to his customer and say, yeah, look, Okay, the competition is uh, sexy and this and that, but we've got a very good product, a very strong product, and then we are replying to you that now we can go forward. What do you think? Yes, we do. And again, through all these layers, there is some kind of disconnection. I mean, if, uh, if uh, as you go along now with the design, there is some kind of disconnection, there is a separation, where you could practically, you could do just the client, without touching the rest. You could do just the web API, API, and then by doing the client, you define what you do. I mean, that's what we did. By doing the client, we defined our requirement for the web API. By doing the web API, we defined our requirement for the data model and the DB exchange. And then this, we kept it, uh, at the moment, we kept it toward the end of the year, where what's happening inside and outside the database it's going to be two different matters. First of all, because it's a different set of skills. Here we have guys we are good, which we are good at with JavaScript, which are good with C Sharp, which are good with coding. Here we have guys which are good with uh, database trigger, SQL in general. And uh, so it's two different set of, of, uh, of skills. And then uh, we kept it separate. We kept it for later. We want to have this and that fully, I mean, as, a, as a neat and precise and well advanced as we wish, as we want. And then once we will be all happy with uh, that stage, where you see, yeah, I put this arrow with the MVC. The idea with this arrow is more or less the design goes in a cycle like this, where this uh, arrow basically defines your rays of view and then defines uh, more or less uh, what, what, what you will be writing in your resolve view, making it easy for you 
to go for the next cycle again. At the uh, end of the year, most likely, we have, uh, we have in the pipeline that uh, we will just go back to the sitting table, you know, brainstorming everyone. And then uh, we will say, okay, now we look at the data on the database. It's not everyone agreeing. It, this is uh, more or less uh, my, uh, my take on this project. And uh, I've got to be honest with you, of all the people which have got a kind of a argument for, I mean, which are around the table for making the decision, let's say we are six, uh, I am the one who talked the best, so usually I get, you know, the argument coming through, but there is one or two who are really reluctant. They say, no, we should be designing the database as we go along. And I said there is nothing wrong in doing that. You could do the same little arrow could come down here as well. And then nothing says it's forbidden. It's just a choice we made. Because uh, when I handle project, I like to you know, limit the scope and then uh, say, OK, anything which is outside will come back on the second round, which makes it uh, easier to chew. So at the end, after uh, now we started October last year, so it's like six uh, months each, ish, nine months, six, eight months. Um, that's uh, more or less what the new system is looking like at the moment, where we've redesigned the web client with uh, Netcore 2 and uh, Angular. I mean, not all of the web client, a big part of the web client. So it's got, uh, like Mitch Seller was presenting yesterday, the two websites side by side, I mean, like two applications side by side where you got the old application still doing its life, and then you got the new face, like for mobile, and then for the new, uh, the new uh, way of uh, handling. In particular, in this, what we did, it's like, it's the key for anyway for this business. It's like uh, they can have 8 million CV and filter it in less than three seconds. That was the challenge for me, honestly. Spent a month just uh, preparing the SQL query for that. And, um, the robots as well, the robot is in the process, but more or less once the robots are being dealt with, that's how they're going to communicate. There will be no more uh, direct to EF or direct to uh, the SQL engine. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, we did uh, spend many days as well deciding if uh, what technology we were going. For example, at that time, there was a few experts available. I mean, that's how I got into it, actually, as an expert for MVC5. And then uh, I turned to my client and I said, hold on, MVC5, I've been playing with it since 2010. Now we're 2018. Microsoft say Netcore, and then they've just published Netcore 2, start to be pretty ma mature. Maybe it's worth giving it a go. Maybe it's a good idea, you know, to stay, as we are going for something new, not, don't jump to the last technology. I burned my wings once trying to go for a beta, and then, uh, I know, I won't do it again. It's like uh, the experience, uh, you know, you don't want to have, <laughs> especially with a beta from Microsoft. So, Netcore, I think it's in version 2, and then my reasoning was in version 2, usually this is more t stable. And uh, we did a lot of testing because obviously the customer was having 6 million uh, business in his hand and he didn't want to put it at stake for just of a decision of a madman like me who come and say, yeah, we will do that now. So we did a lot of uh, validation on many, many pipelines in the business. And then uh, we went for a solution which was Netcore 2 and Angular. But like, for example, as you see here, I put them together with React, Vue.js, and many other mainframes. In uh, total honesty, I didn't see much difference between one or the other. It really much depends on uh, who started and what's the preference. I mean, sometimes usually you're like, you've got the, especially these three, trying to understand what's, you know, wh why, okay, uh, do I pick this one, do I pick this one, and you're trying to make, you know, a justified reasoning, and uh, at the end of the day, you all come down to it. You take the dice. Okay, I'll take that one. Let's go ahead. 
because uh, no, I'm joking. Now, when uh, when we go to the make to this, I mean, when we got to decide, for example, for Angular, from uh, what was important in the project, uh, I've select, I had selected React and Angular, and uh, between uh, React and Angular, there was there are key differences. I mean, I can give you one. React is like uh, you take each library, so it's the size of the library you decide to pick. Whereas Angular is like a full-fledged framework. So when you compile, you got a 16 megabyte um, GS straight away. I agree, I agree. Well, this, I've been surprised with this 16 megabyte GS. Uh, I don't know why it comes in, in the bandwidth. I, don't see, I see it, but I don't see it slowing it down. So it's strange, it's a strange factor. I suppose it's because most of the browser, they have it in cache from uh, all the websites quite likely a bit like jQuery does. I mean, it's, uh, I've tried to you know, go into this detail, and then I didn't found, find any, any slowing down. But what we did, though, after we got a bit of experience with Angular, we started to take off library that we don't need, and then we started to uh, handle uh, you know, the compilation. When you go in the web pack, you play with it. It's quite hard, this web pack, because it's very little uh, detail, very little documentation. So sometimes it's just, uh, you know, you're navigating, just uh, not knowing where you're going. It's a funny bit. But uh, playing with the, um, the web pack, we could reduce this uh, Angular to like one, depending on uh, the little modules we were putting on the page. I mean, I could go down to one megabyte for some, but more or less three to six in average. Um, why did you discount Vue.js straight away? Um, no, I discounted it. In, I mean, it's like in the semi-final. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, why? In fact, to me, it was uh, still uh, JavaScript, so it was just like a retake on uh, jQuery. Yeah. So it's like an announcement on jQuery. It's quite. Uh, I mean, it do, you, do, you do your forms. You know, it does all the two-way binding. It's quite good at this, a bit like Knockout. I discounted it because uh, the kids in the team, they wanted to go for TypeScript. And then I was like, TypeScript, I was discovering it myself. It was the first time I was approaching TypeScript. And then uh, with the argument, a young guy coming, coming out of school two years ago, and uh, I like to listen to the young ones, you know, because sometimes they bring good information as well. They're not so stupid all the time. <laughs> So when um, he goes to me, yeah, TypeScript, I love it, I want to code in that. And I'm like, okay, let's see what it is on about. I started to play, try. And then I find that uh, TypeScript is very much like C Sharp. Even though it's not, it's very much like, and it's tricky because you get, you know, the frame of mind where you think you're coding in C Sharp and, ah, oh, why is this not working? <laughs> no, but you can't do that. But, once, uh, once you get into this kind of problematic, you know, this kind of project, I think it's probably the most difficult bit, uh, being able to have two brains. Because C Sharp is one language, and then Angular is another language, and they are very separate, very different. They do different purposes as well. Even the data model is different. But why we went uh, for this solution? The number one reason, as I was uh, expanding on Angular, is when, uh, what is he crying for here? Remind me later. When, uh, <clears throat> when we were making the decision between uh, React and Angular, I mean, I think it's part of the job market in Lyon. A lot of uh, advertisement for jobs, they come with Angular. And then so all the people searching for jobs, it's easier to attract you know, an interesting developer with uh, Angular skill or looking to get Angular skill. Whereas React, uh, we were in the, having the perception that uh, it was not that much prominent on the job market. I mean, on the job market, speaking about looking for junior developer, you know, we didn't want to pay them dear. And then uh, when we were doing the job interview, actually I was doing them, so one of the key arguments was uh, we were selecting the candidates and then uh, Honestly, I can expect someone to be expert in Netcore 2, where I've just started myself as soon as it started as well. So I can't expect someone to be expert on this, and I can't expect someone to be expert on Angular 2 or 4 either. 
So we were telling them, okay, we're looking to find in your CV some set of skills. And then we will be teaching you these two skills. You should see the sparkle in the eye of this kid. <gasps> I want, I want, I want. They were, ready, they were ready for anything just because we were telling them we are going to train them in this. So that's my, that was like a, you know, one of the key reasons for making that choice. And then um, even the team that was in a place that was doing web form for years, they were really happy you know, to come out of the web form environment and then start to do something which was a lot more, you know, honestly, it's like if you're driving an old car, you know, bumping, and the, the, the seat is painful and things, and then you come into this and you're like, you know, sitting in a, in a Mercedes. Um, <clears throat> right, very easily, very quickly, you get a sexier in interface, a sexier, uh, you know, look to the interface. You don't have to put too much effort because uh, Bootstrap is well integrated. If you don't want Bootstrap, you switch it, you put Materialio, Foundation. It's very well integrated, each of them. And then you choose the one you prefer. I mean, for example, we had the problem, the designer. He was, a, he was a designer, so he didn't really care what was what. So he used the Material EO icons and he used the Bootstrap theming. You know, like the things. And then uh, we had to mix the both. So, well, we made it simple. I did it bootstrap. I took all the material uh, icons into a SVG folder. And then I've been doing the editing of my uh, young kids to learn SVG as well. Because uh, I, I believe in SVG. When I say faster production capability, it stems from, uh, I mean, it could be not true, let's say, the first months. Because there is a lot to understand, to learn, to be able to debug, and then to, you know, there is a lot of tricks here and there to get your Visual Studio to, you know, give you the information, say, oh yeah, it's bugging, but where? Because at the first months, I, there was things I didn't know. Then I was sending the, I, when I was compiling everything perfect, I played the website and bam, big error message. And I search and I can't find and I can't find. I end up finding a, Basically, this message, I had to go to the, after, you know, some trial, I went back, forth, and then I said, yeah, okay, give a Visual Studio, I'm going to play Angular with Angular CLI, so I start to play with it, with Angular CLI, and now I get the error message. Okay, tip script, this line, this line is wrong. Okay, oh, yeah, okay, I understand. And then I started to understand as well how to set the Visual Studio so it would display the error message, because for some time, there was breaking silence, for like a month, he was breaking silence all the time. And then there's been this uh, update with Microsoft. Actually, I went on the, on the forum with uh, Elon Lipton, someone of us know. And then I went on his forum and then uh, saying, yeah, okay, this is breaking silently and this is doing my head in. You know, if you, if you don't do something about this, I'm going to have to choose another solution because uh, we are at the beginning of the project. We are wasting a lot of time here. I had no reply. But as a reply, I suppose, let me guess, there's been an update coming and then Visual Studio started to say about the description, you know, which line in which TS file it was breaking. From there, faster production capability, it means, for example, in Angular, you can design a, a data grid with a lot of life in there. And then you warp it into a div with this little name then you use this exact same data grid with something else. I mean, we did like, uh, you can go into parametering the things much easier than what we used to know. And in fact, the, the, the levels of abstraction or the, you know, the, the separation of things is uh, pretty impressive and pretty clean. Plus, I was, uh, I was quite lucky because in the team I was working with, the, that was the, uh, the thing they like to do. You know, if uh, sometimes the developers, you give them the time to think about how to make it what they think is the best without pressuring them for, you know, delivering in time. And then uh, they were coming out with a, you know, very good component, which uh, we could just call them by their name into another page. And then all the rest of the mechanics was falling in down, falling in down into it, just uh, as, uh, as if uh, it was already all done anyway. 
which is a good thing. Um, continuous integration, that's uh, something which me, I was um, not a specialist of this. You know, I was letting other people do this, so I didn't really know what, even what it means for me. It was just you do your code, you push, and then uh, we see what happens. They come back to, yeah, this is wrong, okay, correct, help you push again. But at this level, on this project, because I was involved in the decision process for everything, at the moment, we were on TFS, and then uh, you were publishing on one folder, copy the folder onto a server, see if it's there. And then there is this guy in the group who played a lot with Docker, Apache, uh, um, sorry, Amazon Cloud, and then um, he was very fond of these things. And then he goes to me, oh yeah, your project in Netcore too, I'm sure we can publish it uh, on this as well if we want, you know, uh, install, I mean, let the process for continuous integration flow, basically, allow it to flow, and then see where it falls down. So we did one step, oh, it's breaking there, okay, oh, correct this step, and then the next step, and the next step. And after trialing error for about three, four weeks, two of us, but, but just playing, it was a game, really, it was not, it was like an hour a day, not even an hour a day, an hour a week. So we were trying things and then stopping what we were doing, having a meeting together, okay, this is not working, so what do we correct, what do we do? We came to a in continuous integration where every time some, one of the developers publish, oh, automatically packs it into Docker, Docker gets sent to the Apache thing, and then in fact it's like a full copy working. And then uh, on the last uh, development uh, thing, so we can do the testing very quickly. And uh, now I'm at the stage where I'm learning how to put the, the, you know, the unit testing, and especially Angular is the, this thing which is called TSLint where you can uh, do testing on the JavaScript side. So I'm uh, in the process of learning it, but I can see the, you know, the, let's say we spend an hour coding, and then someone behind the line is going to spend maybe five or six hours testing every side effect that it could have. Whereas with uh, proper unit testing, you save this person this five or six hours easily. I mean, maybe not the all five or six, but at least three, I would say it's reasonable to think that. Uh, the advantage as well of uh, going into Netcore, it's very versatile. For example, at the moment, they're publishing onto IIS. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the continuous integration, it goes onto Apache. And then tomorrow, a client say, yeah, I mean, this client say, well, okay, I've got enough to pay my uh, server for Microsoft this and this and this. Let's say my uh, ISP is giving me problem. I want a new configuration. I want to go to Azure. I go to Azure. I want to go to Amazon. I go to Amazon. I want to have my own dedicated web server, which I handle myself. But I have no one skilled in Windows. I want someone skilled in uh, Linux. I put it on Linux, and it does. And I even had a client, but this was like a former, another project, who he wants everything in his building be Apple. I'm not even allowed to go with my Android phone in his premises. <laughs> used, no, actually, Android he tolerates, but my window phone. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and even when I bought this machine, yeah, uh, I phoned him and I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got a new laptop. And uh, he nearly got upset because he was not a power Mac. <laughs> Honest, he, he, he showed me the back of his shoulder. I was like, hey, come on, chill out. <laughs> uh, the advantage as well of uh, using Netcore 2 is, uh, for example, it's pretty quick to transform into mobile. I mean, like even uh, as in app. I mean, since you're sitting on, a, you know, the plug I was mentioning, so your information, they are filtering through these plugs. And then, uh, all you really do is the UI, I mean, more or less, what we did. Uh, we've got two or three examples of things we did like this. Is uh, We had the UI, so the client in Angular and everything, where it was doing a lot of things. And then we wanted it to go for the mobile. And obviously, the designer, he made something much more streamed down. And then the person which I put in charge of coding this goes to me, yeah, but that's stupid. If we copy everything, we make the mobile charge everything, and then we strip down what we don't want. So we're going to just do uh, dedicated um, uh, UI, in fact, I mean, dedicated uh, razor page, 
in this case, in this case, you know, razor.mobile.cshtml. And then uh, where instead of uh, opening the page, then using CSS JavaScript to strip out what we don't want for the mobile, we did this in the editor of Visual Studio. We wipe out everything we don't want. And then the code is really streamlined. I mean, we come from a page where there was, let's say, 150 lines. And then the mobile app for the same service it's like 30 line. And then uh, we did a few pages like this where it's like uh, pretty obvious that if you clean it up, but in the code, not it with you, like uh, most of the application tend to push you to do, to uh, say, okay, we use CSS and then we take this off and then we use JavaScript to take these other things off. We went for the streamlined version, even uh, loud loading, sorry, the CSS files, dedicated CSS file, dedicated uh, JavaScript file. Everything is dedicated for the mobile app. But it's a um, copy of the code, which we just clean after that. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, before I came here, I was thinking to myself, this is crazy of me, you know, coming to bring this kind of subject uh, in a DNN conference, expecting the tomato, you know, the rotten tomato. So I'm really glad you didn't send any. Thank you very much. Any questions? You were uh, speaking about uh, slicing the cake before mm -hmm. and then doing the iterations. Right. Um, well, did you do that in Scrum, in an Agile way, or was it more like waterfall? Because uh, I kind of think you did kind of both. Of yeah, them. I think it's more or less there was no set rule. I mean, the, the team is trying to work uh, what we call agile. We've got like, we define a sprint every two weeks mm -hmm. where we have like a list of tasks, which is supposed or likely to represent the amount of work for the, let's say, three, four, five, six. It depends on how many people I have in the team mm -hmm. for that week. And then, uh, I'm very open with this. Each one come. We discuss. In fact, early in the week, we say, OK, these are all the tasks. Uh, now, do, what do you like? So the one say, oh, yeah, I like this one. Can I take it? Have it. And then the next one. And then uh, we just go along like this for the rest of the week. But did you do like the, 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 the UE the Web API, the data model, all in one sprint? Oh, no, I see your question. No, no, uh, this is more like. Um, to be able to do that, you have to have the vision first of the whole thing. And then uh, it shows like a kind of a puzzle where you can take, oh, this piece, yeah, it comes out. Mm -hmm. Now this piece, so I'm going to redesign that. So I check it into little piece, even further, I mean, even uh, smaller. And then this goes into the sprint for the two weeks. So when I say uh, a, a piece of the puzzle which come out, it could be an API, it could be a form, a formula. Or maybe just like a section of a formula. Sometimes we had uh, even just one button. One button could take like uh, three days of uh, development in some case. Especially with all the story about the robots and things. You hit the button, it goes in the database, and then like uh, 20 robots start to run everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Because we are very early, you know. We've got another 20 minutes. <laughs> we could just sit here and... Yeah, like, do you want to see the photo? <laughs> I, I can make all remarks, but there are, most, there, there are no questions. But yeah, get... get uh, Vue.js works with TypeScript support from 2.5.0. Right. So you should change the view. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I should try. No, no, no. Now, it's now it's we like slightweight angular. That, mm. that's, that's it. We, we, we recently started using Vue, and we also had our own problems, of course, with it. Obviously. Uh, but that was, it was interesting to see that you really had to make a, make a choice about those three systems. And, and truthfully, it was I'm really... I'm not sure how many people still use React with the whole Facebook thing going on at the moment. Ah. Okay, that, that kind of... <laughs> yeah, that, that's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> So have, you, have you moved to Vue? We moved instead to Vue, yeah. I mean, instead of Angular now, you've actually moved completely to Vue. Yeah. yeah. And you find it uh, stable, do you? Um, the, the, our front-end developer who was initiating it, yeah. he, had, um, he started it, and then he, he got three developers in there and, and joined him. 
and then um, they, they had some, some problems with um, um, building the components and doing it in a structurized way. Um, at first it was becoming a really big mess and like a spider's yeah. web and spaghetti. Um, so you really had to refactor that and almost start over again. And, and first you need to like have some experience under your belt of yeah. how to do view. Um, and when you know it, then you can like bring in some structure in there and, and really, really build up. Uh, I, mean, you know, I have played around with you and I, I found some problems getting to work and it might just be my lack of experience there. Or it might have moved on a bit since I tried it. Mm. Yeah, I think to get into a framework like this, it takes uh, one, two days at least just to understand, uh, you know, where they're coming from, where they're going to. Doesn't mean you will know how to use it, but just uh, to have a sort of an idea of uh, what it is going to be like. And more or less, when I did the, all the checking, I mean, when I was uh, in the process of helping my client to make his decision which one we were going to go, that's more or less what I was having. About two days to try each. And uh, it's, very, it's very hard, in fact, to have a clear view. So a lot of it is empirical decision. I mean, for me, ending up with Angular and then, uh, and then selecting Angular or React, it was very much the look and feel of the code. Uh, you know, the, 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 the tutorial they provide, what the, what's the, what's the content. Because, for example, Angular, one uh, thing which is quite useful is their tutorial is really neat. And then when we get someone on the team new, I see him, I say, okay, sit there, do the tutorial. When you finish, you come and see me. If, there hasn't, if he hasn't finished in two days, I go, yeah. I mean, we had one first, first try. Yeah. It was like five days. I go, okay, now you finish, you go home. But uh, that, that, was, that was a special case. That was the guy. I come to speak to him. And then I explained what I want, what I, it was just to make a button in CSS, something like that simple. And I go, in this page, we can't use JavaScript. I want CSS. You know, like uh, when you're over, it disappears, things like this. I come back two hours later, he did it in JavaScript, but no CSS. So I explained to him, and I, the, the mad thing, I finish explaining to him, I go back to my desk. As soon as I was starting to move away from his desk, Bam! He leave. But he leave, you know, go for like uh, having a break, basically. And I'm like, I mean, what sort of uh, situation? You just, you know, he's blocked on something. You explain him how to get out of it. But instead of uh, diving into it straight away, he leaves. I'm like, <laughs> you know. I think he needed a cigarette after that. No, he didn't smoke, that guy. He didn't smoke. <laughs> No, he was, uh, he was coming from uh, Morocco. He lived in France for like two, three years. And he, was, uh, he was a strange person, very strange. He was stranger than the French, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when, uh, when you were explaining him something, for example, like for example in this project, I was explaining him like, okay, I want you to do, like for the button, for example, I want you to do this button, no JavaScript, just, C uh, just CSS. And then he was coming, oh yeah, about the web API. He was coming to like higher level question, like if he was, you know, trying to understand the full, uh, you know, spying on the project more or less. And I was like, no, okay, you're completely outside of the subject. Come back to where we, you know, but a strange experience. And this one, after five days, we had to say to him, no, we can't go further, we can't help. But most of the rest of the time, let's say we sit them down in front of uh, Angular, like the Angular IO, the tutorial, at the end of the day, they come all happy. Ah, oh, I've done it, it's nice, I love it. Okay, now you're gonna apply it to this and you're gonna apply it to this. And very quickly, they like the full, uh, the full speed. Plus, uh, it, I could feel the way, you know, the coding into Angular, they, they like it. It's got this nice feeling coding into Angular. And I feel your pain with Webpack. Oh, that's, no. that's a big one. No, this one. Uh, this one, uh, in fact, no, webpack. Uh, we've, we've been there also. Oh, so you know, yeah. yeah we but I know what you feel, I mean. <laughs> because uh, I just don't understand why they made the documentation so impossible. Just in time for, just in time for the question, Ash. Oh. Mm -hmm. Any question? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to repeat? I can do that. We've got time. 
Yeah, we've got 15 minutes. No in double speed. <laughs> no in double speed. Where did you left? Uh, where have you left? <laughs> Was it here? Yeah. Here, yeah. all right. Very quickly. The robots, we say, you don't talk to anti chip All right, but well, you know that one. So here now. So we slice the business into layers. And then uh, basically for the analysis of what we are going to be redesigning, we say, first of all, small, you know, you take the company, it's a big cake, you slice it into slice, and then when you're going to be chewing it, you're going to be biting uh, one bite at a time. So then you go slicing it through all the layers where you decide what you're going to be refactoring into the new technology because you can't be refactoring everything. Now, basically, what we had, we had, uh, when uh, we were having the new concept, we were designing what we wanted on the client UI, which was defining what we were going to do for the web API, which was defining our data model and access. And more or less, it was in a very straightforward way. We were getting the raise of view, and then with the model through the model and the controller, we were getting the raise of view so we could feed it into the client. And then going in a cycle like this, you know, chunk after chunk. I mean, I'm speaking the slice oh, okay. inside one chunk, and one chunk, one cycle. And then we kept this big red line here for the separation. The main reason is not a rule. It's just uh, we had guys good in uh, developing on that side, you know, client side and things. And then we had guys which were very good in SQL. So we said we will do the SQL in a later stage. That's the main reason why it's separated. It could be together. And, well, that was uh, what I, you were telling us, by the way. Oh, so sorry. Sure yeah, yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Pleasure. Separate, yeah, separate yeah, you've got web form, uh, applic it's a web uh, application running on its own, and then the .NET Core is a separate, uh, in fact, we keep it on the same server, because uh, it's easier like this, but it's a separate web application. Separate web application. Yeah. So the endpoint would be separate also, right? The endpoint uh, yeah, it's a different endpoint. Yeah. But what we can, basically, <laughs> what we tend to do is this web API thing here, it's available for both, for the new one and the old one. And then uh, that's the major thing, in fact, that's this drawing here. That what we try to do is everything go through that barrier at the end. That's the objective. So the robots took to the REST API, yeah. the application. This is like legacy where we just didn't uh, touch. Your application Maybe was you. DNN or? Uh, no, it was web form and then uh, on the... Um, on the front, it's called uh, Dev Express. So it's got nothing, it's very different to DNN. Okay. It's like in house design. So when you transferred between here, did you copy some code or is that really written? Uh, no, we, we reanalyzed re every single bit. So rewrite all of the design, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, we had like the customer, I mean, the end user requirement. And then uh, the designer took this end user this requirement and did like a design, a new look, completely new look to what this, the website was anyway. And then uh, formula by formula, page by page. Mm -hmm. And then we took this as a frame to decide, in fact, uh, what we are going to do. I mean, it's like if we do a new development, but using the user case of the former system. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're a